As I was walking home one time, I stumbled across this old PC. It was in a skip. I couldn't resist the urge to take it, so I took it home for a restoration video. As you can see, it has seen better days, as it has been sitting in a skip for a little while. But anyway, let's start the video. What I've captured is quite a beast to say the very least. This is a Mesh Matrix Titan PC, from around 2006, however some of the components inside have date codes of 2004 and 2005. As you can see, this PC features three SATA hard drives. Taking a look at them, the first of the three is a WD Black hard drive which is 160GB in size and dates back to 2009. The second of the three hard drives is an old 320GB WD Caviar hard drive. And the last of the three hard drives is an old Maxta 300GB hard drive which dates back to 2005. Quite old hard drives, but I'm not going to replace them just yet. Not until they've proven to me that they still work. This PC features a really rubbish power supply which is notorious for its high failure rates and two G4 7800 GTs in SLI, and a Creative Lab Sound Blaster. Under this really dusty Acasa heatsink, we have an AMD Athlon X2 4200 Plus processor at 2.2GHz. And I must say, this power supply has really has seen better days, it is just ruined. Now let's give this PC a little test run and let's hope that we don't blow up in the process. And let's just see how things go so far. The 7800 GTs require DVI, which is a good job I had a DVI cable lying around. And in terms of how peripherals go, I'm going to use the same keyboard that I used in my last PC restoration video, and the same knackered Poundland mouse, which I might as well just chuck out. To be fair, I'm actually not quite sure when it was dated, because I've been inside and fixed it, made some modifications. So now let's plug in the peripherals to avoid a no keyboard error, because those are really annoying. And now let's power up and see what we get. That singular beep means the PC is posting correctly, which is great. On the other hand, it seems as if the CMOS battery is dead, but that's fine, I've got a spare run lying around somewhere. And Windows is refusing to boot in here, so I thought I'll just create a fresh copy anyways, because I don't really want to know what's on this PC, to be fair, to be quite frank. And another thing is that old PCs are notorious for being quite loud. Upon further inspection, I found this nasty little blue USB, which we don't want. I might as well just chuck that out. So now I'm downloading a Microsoft Windows XP Professional ISO, because this is the operating system that this PC came with. Firstly, I decided to create a bootable USB drive just to see if the PC would recognise it. And the good news is, is that it did recognise it. However, when I tried to boot off of it, we got a couple of errors. Well, not really a couple of errors, but mostly just freezing. It just didn't really load properly. As you can see, I'm playing this at nine times speed because yeah, it was really slow. It was stuck on this screen for quite a while. So eventually I just gave up and looked for other ways. And another thing, this old power supply started making funny noises, so I just replaced it with a spare power supply I had knocking around. And the lucky thing is, I found, not no, not a Windows 98 CD, but a Windows XP Service Pack 1 CD, which we're going to use to install Windows XP on this PC, because it's the operating system that this PC came with. I was pretty confident that this would go much better than the bootable USB drive attempt, but now we're going to boot off a CD, which is what this PC would expect. Because that's the sort of stuff you did back in the old days. You used to use CDs and DVDs to install Windows. And 
using flash drives and stuff to install Windows was relatively unheard of back then. We made much more progress on this installation, however, there were some errors, but not with the PC, it was the keyboard. The keyboard started acting up unfortunately, so I just dug out this old PS2 keyboard and continued the installation. Well, I had to restart the whole installation, but that's not really a problem because it, it didn't take that long to load up and get to the place it was last time anyways. So, nothing was really lost. Moving on to the final stage of the Windows XP installation, Windows XP is now almost installed and now I've just got to, you know, create a user profile and install drivers and all that stuff. So here we are at the Windows XP out of box experience, however there's no audio drivers so we can't listen to title.dwma which is quite a shame, but that's alright, I'll just overlay it in the audio for you guys. Now we've installed Windows XP, it's time to install some drivers because Windows XP, well any Windows or any operating system without drivers is just, you can't really do anything on it, it's a bit, bit rubbish, very limited experience. So yeah, it's time to install the drivers and see what we get after that. I've got the video driver installed now, so now we're running Windows XP at the monitor's native resolution and it is looking far sharper at 1600 by 900 but now it's time to install the audio driver so we can listen to that magnificent startup sound. One thing I do dislike about this PC is that it takes so long to post and there's just no need for that. Now with all the drivers installed, since this was a Service Pack 2 disc, I'm going to have to manually install Windows XP Service Pack 3, but that's alright. Because Windows XP Service Pack 3 is much more up to date and more secure than Windows XP Service Pack 2, well in today's world neither are particularly secure. But oh well, I'm just keeping this PC to play and run old games on like, you know, Half-Life and all that. And as you can see now, Windows XP Service Pack 3 is successfully installed, so now Let's give this PC a benchmark. Pass mark performance test is the only decent, well, decent enough software I could use to benchmark this PC. But anyway, let's see what score we get. This PC scored 706.2 on the pass mark test, 
considering my PC got 2783.5, that is pretty rubbish. However, my PC score is rubbish thanks to my hard drive and I really should be using an SSD because my hard drive brought the school down. So now let's move on to the fun part which is the restoration process. So what I'm going to do now is gut out the entire PC, removing every single component and every single little bit of dust that I can. And yeah, because when, when looking at the heatsink of this PC, oh it was disgusting, it was absolutely ruined, it was covered in dust and goodness knows what the thermal paste underneath that CPU looks like, oh it must look terrible. Please do excuse my lovely blonde hair as I pull out this Creative Lab Sound Blaster, which is looking pretty nice, very, very good Sound Blaster. And here we have one of the two 7800 GTs in this PC which I'll be taking apart later on and replacing the final pace because these things are pretty loud. The clip was a bit dodgy on the second one, so my brother offered to help take it out for me as I managed the camera. And now that's both of the 7800 GTs out of my PC. And now I'm going to further complete the restoration process. Here we have a module of the case which holds in the floppy drive, the DVD drive and the secondary DVD drive as well as an expansion port. And here we have the first of the two DVD drives, which is looking quite nice. Quite old, but yeah, it's an old DVD drive for an old PC. And now we have the second of the two DVD drives, which is much more nicer in terms of colour as it goes well with the case. And lastly, we have this little expansion port, which holds in another DVD drive or a CD drive I'm I assuming but yeah it's a bit rusty but that doesn't really matter it doesn't affect the performance and now we just remove the power supply and all the other remaining cables on the motherboard and yeah I'm taking a few pictures just to make sure that when I put the PC back together that I put all the cables in the right place because I would like the end result of this PC restoration process to be successful otherwise I would have just wasted my time Here we have a D-Link Air Plus Extreme G PCI wireless card which I forgot to take out earlier, but oh well here it is now. Now I think it's a good time to take a look at the CPU and see how that's faring and to be fair I don't think it's faring very well considering the amount of dust on top of the heatsink. Here's a more detailed view of on top of the heatsink and below the heatsink and as you can see the thermal paste is practically non-existent and that calls for a change of thermal paste. Thankfully I had some isopropyl alcohol knocking around so I could clean the CPU properly and I had some Arctic MX4 as well which is much better thermal paste than the stock thermal compound that was placed on this CPU originally. Now that the CPU is all cleaned up it's time to apply the new thermal paste that I had knocking around and it's also time to clean the heatsink since I've disassembled it, it is in quite a state as you can tell. It is not looking good, and that applies to the fan as well. With new thermal paste and a nice clean heatsink, I'm pretty sure this will lower the temps of the CPU by quite a mile, at least, I would say. As stated earlier in the video, I said I was going to be taking apart the GPUs and giving them a nice clean and replacing their thermal paste. I've got to unscrew these screws which hold the heatsink and the PCB together. And once they're separated, we should have a nice look. And yeah, the thermal paste isn't looking too bad here, but I'm going to replace it anyway, because this thermal paste is much, probably much, much better, as it is Arctic MX4, which is known for being pretty good thermal paste. And now that everything's all nice and cleaned out, it's time to reassemble the PC and give it a new sense of life. Well, this restoration process should give the whole PC a new sense of life.
so now that we have the PC all back together, I think it's time to give the exterior casing a nice clean because there are some nasty marks and scratches as you can see. However, as much as I try to remove certain ones, considering the fact that this is a very old PC and the fact that it's been chucked in a skip and been sat outside in a skip for a while, I don't think it's looking too terrible in my opinion. Now for the exterior casing all nice and clean, let's fast forward to the next day and install some games and see how these games run on the PC. I'm only going to install a few of them and one of these games is Half-Life. Everyone loves Half-Life. The good thing about old games such as Half-Life is that they literally take no time to install whatsoever as opposed to games of today's world such as like, you know, most modern games they take a very long time to install. However, there's one thing that I forgot to install on Windows XP. I forgot to install an up-to-date web browser. And a good option for web browsing in Windows XP in today's world is MyPal. As you can see, it loads my channel up pretty well, not too bad. It doesn't run 1080p at 60Hz, sadly, which is quite a shame. But this PC is old and it's from 2006. But as soon as I bump the resolution down to 720p at 60 frames a second, it does just about run on some videos. It runs pretty well on mine because my videos are pretty simple, but if there's any like high and intensive videos, it doesn't really run very well. And now it's time to take a look at the games, and I don't mean Minesweeper and 3D Pinball. I mean the games that I've just installed on the, on the computer. Starting off with Half-Life, we are getting pretty good results as in the average FPS is around 165 FPS and the 1% lows are around 32 FPS. Not too bad for an old system, in my opinion. Now taking a look at Deus Ex, this also runs pretty well at a nice 126 FPS average and the 1% lows are 23 FPS but it's 1% so it doesn't impact the performance too much, which is pretty great, good stuff. Now taking a look at GTA 3, we're also getting pretty good performance at, as the averages are 95 FPS and the 1% lows are 34 FPS. Not too bad, not too shabby for an old system. It runs, it's definitely very playable and yeah, I would recommend this PC if anyone finds it. So what are my thoughts on this PC? I would say this PC is pretty good actually. If anyone's looking for an old PC, an old Windows XP or a PC to play old games, the hardware inside this thing, I recommend it because playing like new games on playing old games, sorry, on old hardware is not exactly a good idea as well most of the time it just doesn't work and you have to apply patches which is really annoying. But anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching my video. And I do appreciate it because this was very fun to make. And after restoring this PC, I gave it to my brother and my brother Windows XP or WinXP helped me out with this video so please go subscribe to him and yeah I shall see you in another video. Until next time my fellow tech enthusiasts. <laughs>